is called an ukaze motra, or as it is now called on earth, a signboard, which had been just put up and which announced that a club for foreign learned beings, the adherents of legomenism, had been newly opened in that building. Over the door hung a notice to the effect that the enrollment of members of the club was still going on and that all reports and scientific discussions would be conducted only in the local and Hellenic languages. This interested me very much and I thought at once whether it would not be possible for me to make use of this newly opened club for my practice in the Hellenic speech. I then inquired of certain beings who were going in or coming out of that building about the details concerning the club. And when, thanks to the explanation of one learned being with whom, as I chanced to find out, I was already acquainted, I had made it all more or less clear to myself, I then and there decided to become also a member of that club. Without thinking long about it, I entered the building and passing myself off as a foreign learned being, I requested, as an adherent of legomenism, to be enrolled as a member of the club. I managed to do this very easily owing to that old acquaintance whom I had met by chance and who, like the others, took me for a learned being like himself. Well then, my boy, Having thus become what is called a full member of that club, I used afterwards to go there regularly and to talk there chiefly with those learned members who were familiar with the Hellenic speech, which I needed. As regards the second fact, this proceeded from the following Babylonian events. It must be remarked that among the learned beings of the planet Earth, who were then in Babylon and who were gathered there partly by coercion from almost the whole of the planet by the mentioned Persian king, and partly voluntarily on account of the already mentioned famous question of the soul. There were several among the beings brought there by coercion who were not, like the majority, learned beings of new formation, but who with a sincerity proceeding from their separate spiritualized parts, strove for high knowledge only with the aim of self-perfection. Owing to their genuine and sincere striving to the corresponding manner of their existence and to their being acts, these several terrestrial beings had already, even before their arrival in Babylon, been considered initiates of the first degree by those terrestrial three-brained beings worthy to become what are called all the rights possessing initiates according to the renewed rules of the most saintly Ashiata Shiamash. And thus, my boy, when I began going to the said club, it became quite clear to me, both from the conversations with them and from other data, that these several terrestrial learned beings who sincerely strove to perfect their reason had from the beginning kept to themselves in the city of Babylon and never mixed in any of those affairs with which the general mass of these Babylonian learned beings there of that time very soon became involved. These several learned beings kept themselves apart there not only in the beginning, when all the other learned beings who were then in the city of Babylon first opened a central place for their meetings in the very heart of the city, and when for their better mutual support, both materially and morally, they founded there a central club for all the learned beings of the earth, but also later on, when the whole body of learned beings were divided into three separate sections, and each section had its independent club in one or another part of the city of Babylon, they identified themselves with none of the said three sections. They existed in the suburbs of that city of Babylon and scarcely met any of the other learned beings from the general mass. 
and it was only several days before my admittance among them as a member of this club that they, for the first time, united for the purpose of organizing the club of the adherents of Lagomanism. These learned beings about whom I am speaking had all, without exception, been taken to the city of Babylon by coercion, and they were for the most part those learned beings who had been taken there by the Persian king from Egypt. As I later learned, this uniting of theirs had been brought about by two learned beings who were initiates of the first degree. One of these two initiated learned beings of the earth who had his arising among, as they are called, the Moors, was named Kanil el Norkel. The other learned initiated being was named Pythagoras, and he arose from, as they are called, the Hellenes, those Hellenes who were afterwards called Greeks. As it later became clear to me, these two learned beings happened to meet in the city of Babylon, and during what is called their Uwisa Pagaumnian exchange of opinions. That is to say, during those conversations, the theme of which was which forms of being existence of the beings can serve for the welfare of the beings of the future. They clearly constated that in the course of the change of generations of beings on the earth, a very undesirable and distressing phenomena occurs, namely, that during the processes of reciprocal destruction, that is, during what are called wars and popular risings, a great number of initiated beings of all degrees are for some reason or other invariably destroyed. And together with them, there are also destroyed forever very many legomenisms, through which alone various information about former real events on the earth is transmitted and continues to be transmitted from generation to generation. When the two mentioned sincere and honest learned beings of the earth constated what they then called such a distressing phenomenon, they deliberated a long time about it with the result that they decided to take advantage of the exceptional circumstances that so many learned beings were together in one city to confer collectively for the purpose of finding some means for averting at least this distressing phenomenon, which proceeded on the earth owing to the abnormal conditions of the life of man. And it was just for this purpose that they organized that said club and called it the Club of Adherents of Legomenism. So many like-thinking beings at once responded to their appeal that two days after my own admission as a member of this club, the enrollment of new members already ceased. And on the day when new members ceased to be admitted, the number of those enrolled amounted to 139 learned beings. And it was with this number of members that the club existed until the said Persian king abandoned his former caprice connected with those terrestrial learned beings. As I learned after my enrollment as a member of that club, all the learned beings had arranged on the very first day of its opening a general meeting at which it was unanimously resolved to hold daily general meetings when reports and discussions on the two following questions were to be made, namely, the measures to be taken by 